Who are you? I am Pharrell Williams. Pharrell Williams, welcome to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Thank you, sir. Pharrell, right off the bat, I have a gift for you. Okay. I have something that I think is true and dear to your heart. What can it tell the people about your obsession with the Isley Brothers? Wow. Um, well, first off, uh, those guys had have had like one of the longest careers in R&B music, uh, R&B and soul music. And, uh, you know, they are... You know, when you really, really listen to their music, like they really got into a super dreamy zone in the 70s. And I was always like blown away by that because it's like, you know, as kids, we look back to like those groups that were the generation before us and we're like, yeah, well, you know, what would you know about like the dreamy psychedelic stuff? And they're like, well, we invented it, you know, and um, it's just sort of cool uh, to go back and listen to the body of work to see what, where where they come from. For all, is it true that you once fell asleep on the toilet after eating six weed brownies? This is true. This is absolutely true. What was the context for that? Well, it was my first experience. And much like most people who don't know what that is, uh, not that I condone it, parents, okay? But like, you know, uh, you know, you get to that age where like, you know, people are experimenting with different things. And me, I was always against smoking. Um, as I still am, like, uh, you know, my whole thing was like, I got it. I'll eat it that way. I won't affect my lungs. And so, you know, um, I ate one and it was this girl named, uh, this girl named Shelly. And she worked over at like this, this store that we were all fans of at the time in the, I want to say late nineties, early two thousands called filth Mart. Uh, the one that Jay-Z mentions and give it to me or whatever. Uh, so you know, Shelly was like, I can make them for you. So, you know, she made them and I'm I'm eating it. And, and because I'm an, and it, you know, I was inexperienced in, in my mind. I was like, oh, man, that this isn't working. Give me another one. She was like, I don't know about that. And I ate two. I was like, man, these are good. You know, because at the time I like I, I liked brownies, you know, the regular kind. Now, because of this experience, I do not like brownies in any way, shape or form. But um, so. I ate the first two and I really didn't feel anything. She was like, look, you really need to sort of chill out. This is not good. You, you you should stop. And at that point, it's starting to kick in. But, you know, so it's kicking in. And if you're, you are you get the munchies, what are you going to eat? If that's the only thing that's there. So I had, you know, what I remember right around six, um, six, uh, six brownies. And there was a point where like, you know, my manager, we were, I'll never forget. I was playing, um, no, I was getting ready to work with Usher to do You Don't Have to Call. And I played him the track. And I'll never forget, he played me, um, my boy KP, um, A&R over at Atlantic, he played me um, the T.I. song. And I was like, because he was like, y'all really want you to work with this guy. This was before T.I. had ever come out. And forgive me on the chronology because I could be wrong. But I remember him playing me T.I. and I was like, yo, T this guy is amazing. He can rhyme his ass off. But why is the song so long? And uh, obviously we know why it was long. And then all of a sudden um, his teeth began to grow uh, before my eyes. Um, and it was a sound effect that went along with it. And it was the craziest thing ever. And I just kept going, dude, your teeth are getting big. But look, um, that T.I. song was amazing. That was like um that was crazy i think it was t.i.p at the time um and we and he changed it because of q-tip but look long drawn out thing but all of a sudden like the world around me became like his shirt i don't know if you guys can get a view of his shirt but literally it was like straight up big lebowski you know running from the bowling pins weird shit and i went to go you know use the bathroom and absolutely passed out on the toilet on six weed brownies is absolutely true. It's very true. That's Pharrell, 4338 Virginia Beach Avenue. What does that mean to you? Is that Teddy Studio? Yes, Teddy Riley. What can you tell the people about Teddy Riley and the studio? 
That, uh, that, wow. His glasses are awesome. That uh, pretty much changed my life. Um, that, you know, <clears throat> I was a teenager and we were desperately, um, you know, just making music, Chad and I, because we wanted to, you know, we, we, we like making music like the Depeche Mode and like, you know, uh, Tribe Tracks. We love recreating those things and taking those things apart and figuring out how those things worked. And we eventually just became like a little group. It was uh, Chad. It was Shay from NERD and our, our homeboy, Mike uh, Etheridge. And it was kind of cool because, you know, we just got to that's what we would do every day after school. And then uh, we started entering, um, we started entering like uh, talent shows from our high schools. And then um, his studio was like a adjacent, like a five minute walk from my high school. And he sent a scout over, they saw us. And then like, you know, the rest was history. We went over there and started doing some work and well, you won a talent contest, but it wasn't at the high school that you're presently attending. Like you had graduated and you went back there to win the talent contest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that happened when we were in, that happened when we were in high school. Um, but there was another one that we entered and then it was kind of like he had to sign us because he knew us before then. Before then, um, I had written um, his verse for Rump Shaker, only the verse, not the chorus. Um, contrary to popular belief, I see that sometimes on my uh, Twitter timeline. It's like. Did Pharrell really write Zuma, Zoom, Zoom? And no, I did not. I only wrote his verse. Pharrell, you're so into music and stuff that you'll play with a broken arm, right? Didn't you play with like a broken arm? You shove drumsticks in your cast? Yes, I did. And uh, this is like the, you see that muscle right there? That's the muscle. It was completely severed in half and they had to, because muscles are like woven together, they had to pull it really close and like uh, layer it. And when they sewed it together, um, the knot never went down. It never absorbed back into itself. And for the longest time, my wrist was bent up like this. But that wasn't going to stop you though. What do you do with the sticks? Like you would stick them in your cast to keep practicing, right? How hard was that? Super hard. That's crazy that you know that. When things were happening, at Teddy's studio, did he turn down some people? Like I heard he turned down Mick Jagger and Elton John. Did he turn down some people like that? Uh, I don't know if he turned those guys down. I don't know that story, but Teddy is known for turning things down um, just because he just had a very specific vision. I know he had a chance to sign like the Backstreet Boys. Uh, you know, I know R. Kelly came. I remember when R. Kelly came up to the studio. What was that like? It was crazy. How did he roll? How did R. Kelly roll? Yeah, like what happened? I wasn't allowed in. Did that make you mad? <laughs> well, yeah, you're young and you want to be around and all that and you want to see, you know, like I, I wasn't, there were certain things that I wasn't allowed, but that was because Teddy just had like a, so many layers of like, you know, people around him in his compound that like you just, some people didn't think, you know, they were engineers that were cool and then there were engineers that were not, not so nice, you know? And it was because they were, they meant business, you know? They didn't want like kids running around the studio, you know, uh, getting in the way. And quite honestly, that's probably what we did. Like my studio etiquette when I first came to the studio was so wrong. You know, Teddy would play a chord and I would go, hey, why don't you change it to this chord, you know? And that, you know, and the engineer would just look at me and just give me the dirtiest look. And then like when Teddy would walk out of the room, you know, I'll never forget, um, I want to say his name was Jean-Marie. Well, Jean-Marie, he gave me the best lesson in the world. He sat me down. He was like, look, Teddy's the boss. When he's working, you don't say anything. You're lucky to be in the room. You sit quiet and you listen to everything that he's doing. You absorb, you, you absorb everything that you can. And when you have the opportunity to ask him a question, you ask him a question, but you don't just jump out. You've got to have stu better studio etiquette than this. I believe in you, and I see what Teddy sees in you and Chad, but you have to calm down. Because Chad was quiet. Chad wouldn't say anything, but I was like, you know, I was like the young, hothead, fiery Aries. He'd be like, change that chord. 
change the snare, <laughs> you know, and it was just kind of like, pipe down, pipe down, Russ. For Teddy's studio, it's kind of sad. It burnt down, and then Teddy had that problem with that real estate girl trying to scam him. How is Teddy doing? I don't know, but you know what? Um, when talent is is when talent is loyal to talent, then it will always find a new home. You know, talent is like um, like the legend of the phoenix. You know, there's no ending or beginning. It just it'll be okay. He'll be okay. He's a he's an incredible talent. If he wanted to stop making music right now, he could be the best in, uh, mixing engineer in the game. No disrespect to anybody else that I use and love and appreciate. But his ability to mix, him and Dr. Dre are the most mixing guys. They can make a shitty snare sound like it is something that's just been created by Roland. They're incredible guys. Pharrell, quote, big white spaceship with green windows. This gonna get me high tonight. High tonight. Yeah. The SBI demos. What can you say about the SBI? What was SBI? SBI, wow. SBI is a is a group uh, that Timberland had that I was in along with Magoo called Surrounded by Idiots. And we were like obsessed with the tribe. And Tim did the tracks. And at the same time, I was with the Neptunes. And at that time, the Neptunes was a group. As I said before, it was Chad, Shay, myself, and, and Mike Etheridge. And so I was in both scenarios. And Tim's, uh, you know, the group that we had with Tim was surrounded by idiots. And it was crazy. Pharrell, I wanted to ask you about this little thing. Quote, the Virginian Pilot, the magazine, the newspaper, Virginian Pilot. Do you remember the Virginian Pilot? Sure. Do you remember your first appearance in the Virginian Pilot? No, and probably conveniently so. A photo of you appeared in the Virginian Pilot, but it was all smeared. The red ink was all smeared. Yeah, let's not show it. Right. You, nobody could see it. However, your mom wrote a letter to the Virginian pilot saying, that's not fair. My son's picture got smudged. Not why. This is true. I thought that's pretty cool. Your mom writing a letter to the editor on the occasion of your first appearance. Your mom's great. Yes, yes, yes. Moving on. Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all? No. I, uh, I'm good. I'm, I am, uh, as embarrassed as I think I need to be for the day. So I'm good. Well, thanks so much, Pharrell. Keep on rocking in the free world and do, 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 do. Well, actually. That works. Well, actually works. Well, no. Well, actually, I've got some questions for you. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I'd this is very exciting, Pharrell. Yeah. Should we end the Nardware port? Okay, continue on. Oh, no, we continue on. Is oh, this dual mic action? Oh yeah, dual mic action situation. So, 